Well, our moms think we're funny. All right, recording. I'm not eating my damn donut, dude. <laughs> hey, everyone, I'm a Comey. I feel so <laughs> fucking unprofessional. I've got a damn mouthful of donut, really. This is good water. It's waterific. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm going to drink this water and see how you see it. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Hello, everyone. My name is Turkman82. Yes. Welcome to our professional podcast. And I am in the middle of eating a a donut that has actually gotten pretty stale, considering we just bought them last night. Yeah, it's a damn shame, really. Duncan doesn't age well, but America runs on it, so... Mm-mm. I doubt that, seriously. <laughs> no, no, pretty sure. Hey, would I, would I, uh, do you think I'd get canceled or get, get in significant trouble if I talked about, like, fat people in advertising? Mm-mm. Okay. Because I've just, I've noticed it becoming more prominent, and I know it's not really politically correct to to just flat out say fat people, but, you know. Fat people dancing in commercials? I wasn't even thinking about fat people dancing. Uh-huh. I was I was thinking, like, I've seen it with clothing advertisements, where there's, uh, there's just, like, fat people, like, in, like, t-shirt advertisements. Like, I've seen it with, like, Spreadshirt or Redbubble or whatever, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I don't, I don't have a problem. You know, if, if a fat guy wa- or, or girl wants to model a shirt, that's fine. I just think that they need to wear an appropriate size to their body type. Well, <clears throat> so, I think it just goes with everything. It's like, you you have to, like, whatever clothes that you're wearing, they have to fit you. Yeah. They, 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 they have to fit you, not just like, like they have to fit your personality, but they have to actually fit you and fit your body. So, the other day I was getting gas, right? Yeah. And I got my mask on, and I'm waiting, and I'm looking around, and nobody else at the gas station has a mask on. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay. Um, now, that, that's a whole other topic of, like, you know, why people aren't doing it and, you know, whatever. But no one has their, their mask on. So, the, the guy, person pulls up to me, and uh, not, not, but they pull up on the opposite, not, not on the opposite side of where I am, but across from me. Yeah, yeah. And... Uh, and the, the the person gets out, and I can already tell by the way that they're like sliding to the edge of the seat before they try to swing their legs over. Right. Like this is gonna be a big person, right? <laughs> and they get out, no mask on, wearing shorts. It's not that warm out because it's, it's 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 the sun is out, um, but it's still like a like a really cool breeze out because we still have a little bit of ice and snow in in certain spots. So you know, mm-hmm. it's just, it's mm-hmm. still a little a little cool. So, um, um, so this person gets out, no mask on, wearing shorts, um, and the back of their car had all these bumper stickers on it. Um, <laughs> and I looked at them, and uh, and I was like, "Huh, okay." And uh, I was like, "All right, you know, whatever." Yeah. So the person gets out and they're um they're wearing these shorts that are way too small for them. They're too small because all the inner thigh are all moved up and like is like have not a found a new location between the <laughs> taint and the crack of their ass. <laughs> their shorts are like have like taken this like this this big dip like down in the front <laughs> because their belly is hanging over the top of the mm. the and when I say hanging over not not like like their belly sticks out over like top of that no it's hanging down over the top of the shorts. Yeah, yeah, like an apron. Yes. And yeah. then the um then the shirt barely comes down to cover the belly, except for when they move, in which case, you know, you can see everything. Right, right. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, first off, um you fat fuck, right? <laughs> uh, and, and I'm not gonna be—I'm not gonna be delicate here because there appears people who are who are overweight, you know, for various ways. But but first off, you fat fuck, right? 
this wasn't something that happened to you overnight. You know, you, they, this, you saw this happening and you chose not to do anything. And, and maybe you're, maybe you're happy like that. Maybe, you know, you, they, you're, you're happy like this. Um, but, um, but you can buy some clothes that fit mm -hmm. so that, that your shirt comes down even lower that your shorts actually like pull up over your belly and are long enough and wide enough in the waist so that not like everything's all bunched up like you know in your ass like <laughs> I mean and not only will you look better but you'll feel better because then you don't have all of your body skin shoved up your ass right I mean the the shorts were so were sh the back and the crotch were shoved so far up his ass that you had to have like X marks the spot so he knew where to go when he wanted to take the shorts off. Like like it was a pirate treasure. Like I had to find like the spot that I need to go and pull and retrieve this so I can get them off. Either that or it's like I'm just going to push him up deeper and then I'll just put on another pair of shorts over that. His body just absorbs the shorts. Yeah, it's like... I mean, what, what threw me off with, with... I mean, this is like, you know, it's a professional t-shirt company. But like their model, fat dude... But his shirt was so tight that there was just a big dip in his t-shirt where his cavernous belly button was. Oh, yeah. And the shirt was so damn form-fitting that you could just see, like, exactly how deep his belly button was. And it was just like, ah! Yeah, when, that doesn't make me want to buy your shirts! <laughs> right. When that shirt is, is on you so tight that that I can see the impression of your navel and it looks like a singularity event. Right. Like, that, that, <laughs> there's a problem there. It's the black hole. <laughs> it's the event horizon. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, 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 it's like, it's like, like, I think in here, I scream, I want to like stick my hand in his, in his like navel and like rip and pull Jack Noseworthy out. <laughs> like, hey, hold on, baby boy, I'm coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just like, it's baffling to me because, you know, advertising is advertising and you can say what you want about like body positivity or about like sexism or, or whatever, but it's like, part of the reason that advertising for, you know, 50, 60, 70 years has used really pretty ladies is because that's eye catching, and then you're like, oh hey, and you're already in the like you see that, and it's like, yeah, now now I'm in the mood to obtain, and so you know that's just that's advertising 101. Mm -hmm. It's like you see the pretty girl, and it's like, oh hey, pretty girl want, and then you just associate whatever it is they're advertising there. You know, I I see somebody's big old navel gap swallowing up the t-shirt. I don't think I want that t-shirt. <laughs> I don't even remember what the fucking t-shirt is at this point. <laughs> well, the thing is, like, when you're looking at it, and you're looking at at, at something like, so, let, so let's say that, that there's a, a, a plus-size place where there's, like, a, I don't know if they say so, just more like a Lane Bryant or, like, a, uh, like, an SNK, like, you know, big and tall. Right, right. The models that you see for those are bigger people mm -hmm. to show you, as a bigger person, what you would look like wearing it. Mm-hmm. But if you show me wearing something that's way too tight and like, you know, like it's like it, it, like everything is like, like everything is showing on me. Mm -hmm. I don't want to wear that because that's not the look I'm going for. Right, so yeah. it's like you're like you're not really doing me any favors. Yeah, it's like just, just you know, at least have your your big fat guy wearing a shirt that's appropriate to his size, <laughs> like. <laughs> He he may need to to add a couple of X's there to his shirt size. Yeah, I mean, and I, again, this is gonna this is gonna sound kind of bad, like what you were saying, but it's you ever see like an ad for like um like lingerie or something, and then it says also available in plus sizes, yeah, which is fine. But when it's something, have you ever seen that that one outfit? It's like a it's like a like a, a bra and bikini or like a that yeah, bra and panty set. But it's made out of um, it's made out of the like a, uh, it's like looped together like a candy for like a candy bracelet or candy necklace. Uh, I think I've seen something like that. Yeah. So so like it's candy bracelet, candy necklace, but then it's a bra and a, a panty set that has been strung together to you know to look like the um, and that's been strung together with the with those candy things on there. Yeah. yeah. And it's just all also comes in like plus sizes, and I'm like, I I. I don't think I'll I'd ever be that hungry. You right. know, I'm like, I'm like, and I'm not trying to make fun, but like, certain things don't shouldn't be in that size. I mean, that's a lot of candy. And, and I right, and, I, and I, I understand that, like, you know, you want some of the same things, but it's like you can't, 
you, you can't have it. You know, I mean, like if you if you weigh like five hundred pounds, um, then you can't buy a smart car. You know, right, right. I, I understand you probably want one, but the two don't go together. <laughs> I mean, so, unless you're going to buy two and put them both together right on top, it's not going to work for you. <laughs> I just... You just cut the bottom out of one and see him, like, slide through, like, flip, 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 flip. <laughs> Fat guy. Me, the fat guy. No, it's... <laughs> it's his feet running along the street. <laughs> yeah, and then after he stops the next block, he's like... <sighs> <laughs> I mean, I'm being, a, I'm being a serious <laughs> ass right now, but I'm just saying, like, <laughs> he gets home, he's like, Wilma, bring up the brontosaurus spare ribs. <laughs> but I'm just thinking, like, certain things aren't made for you. And, but it also goes, like, if you're, if you're really tall, right, then you can't wear, like, certain outfits because they just don't work. They don't fit for you. Yeah. If you're too broad in your shoulders. Like, I have a problem because my arms are slightly longer than normal. Hmm. That... When I go to wear like a uh, like a hoodie or a shirt or something like that, I've normally like if it's a long sleeve shirt, I've got to get a little bit longer, like a bigger size, so that it comes down. Otherwise, it's a little short on my on my wrist. Yeah, yeah. You know, so then that that means is that the normally if you go like if I buy a large, but because of because of my arms and everything, um, I'm buying a long sleeve shirt or a hoodie, I've got to go up a size. Well, when you go up a size, it doesn't go up a size in length. It also goes up a size in width. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. now the shirt is swimming on me, uh, and on my on my my torso, but the arm length is right. Right, right. So sometimes I have to look at things and I'm like, I can't, I can't buy that. Right. It doesn't fit my body type. It's not going to look good on me. Right, right. Will it keep me warm? You know, in like the in like the fall when there's a breeze and I have my sleeves down. Yeah, it will. But I have other items that I can wear that don't have to have that one that both will keep me warm and will look good. You know, so mm-hmm. it's it, it, it's your decision that if you want to look good, you know, then you have to accept the fact that certain things aren't going to work for you. Yeah, yeah. And you and I had talked about this before. It was like, I look at shirts, like outfits, and I'm like, oh, I'm like, I like, I like that that sh- that shirt. Um, I like that. I like, that's kind of awesome. And I look, I'm like. But that's not going to work for me because I don't have that build. You have to have like a more muscular like build Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. in order for that to look right on you. I don't have that. So I know it's not going to look right on me. I'm not going to buy it. It sucks that, that, you know, as much as I like it, that I can't, um, that I can't, I can't because it's not going to look good on me. It sucks, but yeah, hey, that, that's life, right? Yeah, yeah. Same thing, you know. He's like, you, 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 if you're gonna do something like that, it has to look right on you. Yeah, yeah. And if you're trying to sell a product, I mean, that's how you're gonna do it. Mm-hmm. Is making sure that it looks right on the, you know, on the model, so that the person that's gonna buy it be like, oh, now I know what it's gonna look like on me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, then it like. It creates this idealized thing of like, well, if this person can look this good in that, then maybe I could. And right. As I mean, opposed to like, I don't want the world to see how deep my belly button goes. Like, right. Shit. <laughs> so, it, like, like if you if you if you're uh, an overweight person, part of wearing clothes is to hide the fact that you're as overweight as you are. Right. <laughs> Just like I don't work out, I don't have a muscular physique, so I actually use clothes to hide the fact that I don't have a muscular physique. You know, right, yeah. <laughs> I don't wear things that are overly tight because it's going to show like, oh, look at that scrawny ass bitch. You know, it's like, <laughs> so I wear things that are a little bit looser. You know, and 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 I try to I try to hide it. You know, no, and so that's just kind of how it works. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, so do we have to be nice now for the rest of the podcast? Can we start off being an ass? Hell no, we just keep up the, the momentum. That's right. Yeah. Just keep moving. <laughs> and, and, you know, I'm going to say this, right? If you are a heavy set person or overweight, I'm not saying anything that you haven't heard before, haven't said yourself, or don't already know. Right. And one thing I can't stand is when a person is acts like, oh, you said this about me, like, like as if you didn't know that. Right. You know this already. <laughs> you know, you you don't you don't have a right to be offended by me calling out something, you know, that that you already know. Now, could I have put it in a politer way? Yes. Did I have to say anything at all? No. But I did, but don't act like 
like it's news to you. Yeah, it's like if you, if you just can't stand the fact that we bring it up, then listen to a different podcast. It's yeah. easy. It was like you you can't you can't be upset when I when I say something like you know well did you realize that you have on one brown shoe one black shoe if they look down and be like no I don't you know it's like well you're not that overweight <laughs> if they they're like you know well yeah I knew like mm, no you didn't because I just right. made that up it just shows that you can't actually see your feet. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> uh. Yep, yep, yep. Ah. So, uh, this podcast wasn't supposed to be about fat people. You're the one who made it about fat people. I did, I did. But do we want to actually, like, jump on the topic? Um, why not? I mean, or that's do we what just we're here for. just keep talking shit about people? Because I got more. No, because I can, I can go on forever talking about people. It's the only way I feel good about myself. <laughs> So no, let's so let's actually bring up a, a topic. Okay. What would you think would be a good topic? Fat people. <laughs> they have no reason. No reason to live. No wait, wait. That's short people. That's short people. Sorry. We got we got a song parody. <laughs> Fat people got no reason. Uh, and you know you know who uh, who wrote sang that song short people? I used to know. You don't know? Not, not now. No. I, I used to know the guy's name, but... Randy Newman. That's right. Yep. Mr. Pixar short story, Randy Newman. Yeah. Toy Story. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, um, so podcast topic. Podcast topic. Time travel. Time travel, because we never get enough of this. Yeah. Um, I, I wish I could go back in time and stop myself from making fun of fat people. <laughs> yeah, I wish I could go back in time. I wish I could find a way um, to <laughs> take back those words that hurt you and say something even meaner. Because apparently that whatever I said wasn't mean enough to, to tell you, like, don't fuck with me, right? <laughs> yeah, I know I started it, right? But, you know... You know and when, when I throw a big enough rock, that should be like, you know, hey, <laughs> don't make me throw something bigger. But apparently, like, no, 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 that rock wasn't big enough. Like, all right, fine. Bring it, bitch. Um, <laughs> but no, uh, so time travel. Time travel. So I had two time travel questions. Um, and uh, I was like, oh, let me, let's see how we feel about this one. So my first time travel question uh, was, um, if you could travel... Uh, if you could travel back in time and either, uh, I think it would work better if you brought them to like the, the, the present day mm -hmm. as opposed to bringing something back to them, but it, it could work either way, but you go back and you, and you meet a scientist or you grab a scientist and, uh, if you meet a scientist and you show them modern technology, yeah, right. And how it works. So let's say we went back to, um, uh, um, I mean, you can go back to like, let's, let's see if we make back to like 1910, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, some people didn't even have indoor plumbing still, you know, some people didn't have like electricity or, you know, and you show, and you show some scientists there who are like, you know, they're on the verge of like something, a new discovery. You show them like a cell phone right, or a right. tablet, you know, and I know we always think about things like that, but you show them these kind of, you know, these kind of things, um, or maybe see something even that, that's not even that great tech, uh, like technology wise, like, um, like, uh, let's say that, uh, well, obviously you can't show them a TV. I mean, cause it'd be just like a tablet, but let's say if you went back to like the time of the uh, era of TV and you showed them a TV with a remote control, mm -hmm. like not, not one of the ones that came out in like the fifties or sixties that the wire that was attached to the TV, <laughs> I'm talking about like a, a, a wireless remote control, um, and be like, you know, you know, isn't that something? Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and you see, and the whole point of this is like, to you're showing these people this technology and now they're not going to have the capability of making it yet because like like uh microprocessors haven't been uh, haven't been invented and that kind of stuff right right but it's like this is where technology goes in the future and then they're, they're like like oh wait I've been, I've been looking at this all wrong um I told you a story about uh, about TVs right and like how um when uh, oh, I'm sorry radios how when the Japanese uh were selling radios, um, like Americans didn't want to buy them. 
Mm, it's not ringing a bell. Okay. So my my, uh, my professor in college was telling me this is like when um. So after World War II, the Japanese had uh, had decided they were going to start. They were going to kind of shift more to technology, mm -hmm. and they were start making these um start making like radios and the things. Well, you know, in Japan, like they have their landlocked, so they have a limited amount of space for things. Right. And and because of that some people live like very um. See, frugal is not the word I'm looking for, but. Um, very minimalist like lives because their their houses are small and they don't have you know they live in like this kind of like a, this apartment complex thing and they don't have a lot of space for a lot of you know additional garbage right yeah um, so because of that uh, like the things they do have have to be smaller right yeah so like having a small radio or a small TV it fits because I don't have a lot of space in my apartment mm -hmm. so you know after after World War II, they, they were making these things, and they developed the micro the microprocessor, right. and um, and they were making like small radios, mm -hmm. and they were trying to sell them uh, in America. Well, back then in America, they had these the the uh, the radios and uh, record players and stuff. They were these these huge things. They were like like bigger than a coffee table, and they had these these speakers on them and stuff. Right. And right. but they were but they were like a like a uh, a part of uh, the like, really furniture. So, because you would have like most of the time, you had these big, huge things, and then the top would be uh, would be flat, and that's where you would put like portraits and stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah. So it was, it was almost like like a, like a fixture. And when they were trying to sell them um, in America, Americans weren't interested in buying them because they were like, okay, but like, where am I gonna where am I gonna put my pictures and stuff? Right. So I'm used to, I'm used to setting things up on top of this thing, but this device is so small that it's not a piece of furniture in the house. Like where am I gonna put this stuff at? Where am I gonna like where am I gonna like like I said put pictures of my family and stuff where normally I would set them up on that thing? Yeah. So they didn't yeah. buy them, um, and then eventually some people did start to buy it and then it kind of picked up. But prior to that, it's like I don't have a use for it or it doesn't sit my needs because it can't do what something do, which is serve as, a, as an extra piece, piece of furniture. Right. Yeah. I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. Okay. So and so the whole point of that was saying you know so if if that was the mentality of like scientists, or I say scientists, but like you know electricians and engineers back then, and then you show them this thing of like you know everything is going smaller, and they're like okay everything is going smaller, and they start working towards going smaller, right? Then right. you know you're you're going to be like two years ahead of that technology. Mm -hmm. um, then like our current uh, our, our current uh, I don't want to say existence, but the like present day, um, and then that means that. We would be like ahead, right, of right. these things te technology wise, because we would have already started working that like uh, in advance. Yeah, yeah, I like it. So that, that's kind of like how the how this this podcast was kind of said. Like we're asking questions, like, okay, so what would you want to show them, and how do you think that would that would change the future as far as like how they would start pursuing a different angle of that, and how would that change the future? Yeah. So what you I mean, what you got? Uh. I would like to take an Oculus back to a 80s Nintendo. Unfortunately, you can't. What do you mean? You can't take an Oculus, Oculus back. How, 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 oh, yeah, well, it wouldn't work. Right, because you have to sign into Google now for the Oculus. That's right. You have to sign into Google, yeah. so if you took it back in the past, you can't sign in, it won't run. So then I uh, would I have the option of bringing Miyamoto from the 80s to the, to the present day? Um, as long as you got the, well, the actual man, not, not everything with, not like all of his, his uh, followers. Yeah, no, um, just, just, him. just him. I mean, he's the idea guy. Oh, sure. Yeah, uh. Shigeru Miyamoto from the 80s. Bring him here. Let him actually see a working Oculus. Let him play something like, uh, like the Walking Dead game or Beat Saber, or something that just like completely immerses you in it. So you're going to bring him to the present day? Yep. Okay. Just just long enough to let him see that, and uh, you know, just just let him see where video games are going. Because uh, there, the, I mean, there were plenty of game developers back then, but Miyamoto had a very natural talent for game development. Like, if you look at the first level of Super Mario Brothers, it's just it, it's a brilliant bit of game design that like it teaches you the play control of the game within seconds of turning it on. 
Like, you, you can be totally blind, never have touched Mario before, but if you play the first level of Super Mario Brothers, you learn how to play right. very quickly. So I would love for him to be thinking way back then about game design and what it's going to be like now, and just kind of let him get an earlier start on what that is. Hmm. So that, that, that was the first thing I thought about with that. Yeah, I like that. That's a good idea. Um, see, I didn't really have anybody in, like, specific in mind, but I would... Uh, you wouldn't want to bring Tesla up to the state age? No. Hmm. I would like to maybe bring up uh, Laszlo Panaflex. No, just for, I don't even know <laughs> his real name. This is from The Simpsons. Um, I, I would... Like, cell phone activity and that kind of stuff, like, no... Um, Oh, I'm trying to think, like, what would I want to, like, bring back and show them? Um, so, something that was, um... Uh, hey, I'm, I'm thinking about, like, the, um... Like, the ring and the TV and that kind of thing. Like, no, 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 that wouldn't work. Because <laughs> cause that, yeah. So, I, I don't... Maybe, maybe, I, maybe it would be better just to bring them up front. Then bring them to the present day and be like, okay, look... Look at all the, look at, look at how, how, like, here's, here's my life. Here's like how I work and how I do this stuff. And right, like, right. this is how, this is what everything is. Like you're working on like the, like the computer that you're, like, if I take from the fifties, the computer that you're working on now that takes up an entire room, mm -hmm. like I have right here and it can do all this stuff. And you know what I mean? Hell, showing somebody, so showing somebody from like the, the forties, a color TV, oh, I yeah. think it would just be like, would blow their minds. And then the clarity of it too. Mm -hmm. And it, here's the I think this would be kind of interesting is if you take that and you um and you show somebody a movie and it's in like a uh, letter a like letterbox format. Oh yeah. And then you're like, yes, in the future, you're like, this is how we watch TVs. And you're like, wait, what? You don't watch them as squares? Like, like why right. not? Why don't you want to watch it as a square? It's like we just don't. So, see uh, if you if you don't actually show them on a rectangular screen. Then they're just gonna think, oh, why are there these black bars across the top and bottom? I don't like that. Right. So yeah, that that'd be pretty interesting. I remember when when widescreen format first was the thing for um, for uh, DVDs, mm -hmm. and there was a thing where they were like, you know, yeah, people don't understand like the like the black bars, and they um, and they thought that uh, My that they were thought it was that they were covering up part of the screen. Yeah, and um, and they were like, like, and they was like, and the picture's smaller. And it's like, yeah, but you don't understand that when, if it's not in that, it's what they call pan and scan. And so they decide like, what's what's the most important thing for you to see? And they actually like move like the cell uh, or the uh, the uh, um, hold on uh, the film strip like across like the uh, the camera for the. For processing or whatever, they would slide it over one side and slide it back over the other side. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then you get that that weird motion when it, when the camera moves because the camera didn't actually move. It's after affected. And like and and then you would lose like the sides would be cut off, so you would lose any great cinematography mm -hmm. because it cuts off the sides. Or and we mentioned this once before with the um, the Fight Club. Yeah. And the airport scene when the when um, when uh, he's at the airport and Tyler gets in the car. This the um, convertible and drives off if you were watching on regular tv mm -hmm. um when the guy comes comes running out behind him and says hey that's my car you can't see him mm -hmm. you can hear his voice but it doesn't matter it doesn't mean anything to you without seeing him running after the car saying right, hey that's right. my car so you kind of lose a whole part of the film because of that yeah yeah anyway so i, I think it's showing them that kind of thing like this is what tv looks like in the future mm -hmm. um and this i was filmed this in color and it's in hd and that's it. Yeah. Now, what would be funny? What would what would be funny is uh, if you went back to like the nineteen forties mm -hmm. and uh, found somebody that was doing like the like the little the nudist colony movies. Oh yeah. And showed them. Show them actual porn. Right. And, and just the one watch them flip out because like it's like even like that's way too far more than I want to go and like this what this was like in the future and see like if they de-escalated things oh I think they would or if they like if they like well this was gonna become so I'm gonna go ahead and start doing that now and then you know I think I think if you showed like 
like the founder of Hustler or something that when he was like that much younger, then I could see that where it's like, no. you know, yeah, I'll lean into it. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Larry Flint would definitely would have leaned into it. Yeah, and been like, hell yeah, I like this. <laughs> I can do way better than this. But uh, you know, I think like the '40s guys with with their little nudist colony things, I think that it would make them pull back and just be like, oh hell no, this is depraved. Yep. So uh, yeah. Uh, what I'd like to do is take some really great modern comics and take them back to, like, the 30s and 40s. Hmm. Because, like, look at how incredible Will Eisner was figuring out the comic industry stuff himself. And, like, he was a pioneer and he figured a lot of that shit out on his own. So, like, bringing him back something like Bone or, uh, like, City of Glass... Something like that, where it's just, like, incredible art that's so far ahead of its time, and and just, like, doing things with the medium. Uh, like, I, I, would, I would love to let, uh, like, let 1930s Will Eisner see, like, the later issues of Cerebus, where Sim is, like, just super experimental with stuff. Hmm. Think, things like that. I think, I think that would be pretty interesting to see how that impacts comic art. It would be interesting. I think I would have to show somebody, uh, like, video or something of, like, modern warfare. Hmm. Like, missiles and stuff like that. And be like, this is kind of where it goes. Like, drones and drone strikes and stuff. Like, yeah, yeah. This is where it goes. And But I don't know if it would, if it would again, de-escalate or if it would escalate. Like, hmm. I think that depends on who you show, too. I know, like, when nukes were first becoming a thing with America... And you know that, like, I, I think, I think uh, this this may be completely untrue. I don't know. I, I didn't like verify the information, but um, I I read that like when they were still discussing nukes and were discussing like the key setup and all that, and uh, I, they hadn't settled on using the two keys and the launch codes and all that. What one of the uh, counselors recommended was that you put the key to the nuke inside. A volunteer person, so that in order for the president to launch the nuke, he has to kill an, an innocent man, and basically carve the key out of him. And a bunch of the generals were saying, "We can't do that because if if he has to kill an innocent man in order to launch it, then he'll he'll never do it. Right. He'll never launch a nuke." But that that seems very apocryphal. So I don't know if that's true or not. Well, I think in that case, then you um you take him and. Uh... You know, I wouldn't have any problem with that. Again, it's the needs of the many. So if I'm going to a bunch of, save a bunch of lives and i got to kill you to do it. And, and again, you volunteered for this when they were like, we need to cut somebody up and put these keys inside. And be like, ooh, right. ooh, ooh, me, 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 me. <laughs> and you're like, okay. <laughs> I'd like to bring back a King of Kong VHS to the guy who initially broke... Billy Mitchell's record. Yeah. Just because it has that evidence of him cheating. Yeah. So for for him to be able to to like have that and be like, oh no, fuck this guy. <laughs> yeah, that would be cool. That'd be good. Pick that up. Yeah, that'd be satisfying. Yeah. So the other part of this uh, was time travel. You can go into the future, mm -hmm. but it's a one way trip. There's no coming back. Yep. Where do you go? And it's only to the future. Only to the future. Do I have any way of knowing where it is I'm going to end up? Like, what's going to be happening? Well, we know it's going to be over New New York. Not, not New York. <laughs> I've been watching Futurama. We know it's going to be over, like, uh, well, I guess it could be over, like, I guess it could be over, like, um, any part of the... Shit, no, see, that makes it tough. I was going to say, we yeah. could be... It, normally in time travel, when you go somewhere, like, you appear in that spot in the future. Right. But not knowing, like, what the future holds, you know, that place might not even exist anymore. It could be, right. like, Swampland, so... Right. I, I, I don't know. Um, um, I mean, like, the, the easy answer is to just say that, like, kind of like the, the Infinity Gauntlet, it just, it plans on that. It plans on making sure that you appear in a safe place or whatever. And mm -hmm. so, 
that's that's fine to just like go with the easy answer. But the scary thing about doing all this forward travel is that like I don't know how far forward I go before I just run into the heat death in the universe, you know. <laughs> That's true. I mean, how far were you thinking, though, man? Well, and I'm sorry. You, I mean, you, I was saying, I was thinking, well, how far are you going to? You're going to rent, but shit, I mean, who knows? You go that next year, and like, well, right, everything right. could go to hell. So you, you just don't know. Yeah, like, and, and we've talked before. Like, the end of the world isn't necessarily all the world blowing up. It's just society collapsing. So, so I don't know. That's that's worrisome. Um, so. I see. That's the thing. I'm not quite sure where I want to go either, because when I look back on like the last couple of years, mm -hmm. like, I don't see anything much different in the last couple of years. Where I was like, well, if I went ahead, it would be like things would be so much different. We'll have like be bubble, bubble top cars and something like that. But like, no, there's, there's no indication that that would that that would happen. So, mm -hmm. like, how far would I want to go? Um, like five years, I don't think is enough. Ten years, I don't think is enough. Twenty years, maybe too far. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. So, I mean, it, I guess if any degree of future travel is is necessary and there's not just a way to cop out, like, I feel like saying, oh, I just want to travel forward a year, I feel like that's kind of a cop out, you know? Like, there's nothing interesting about that answer. So, I'm just going to lean into this and say, like, 2,000 years. A lot of shit can happen in 2,000 years. You that's... look at how we've progressed as a society going from ancient Rome to now, that's a really big jump, and it's been very exponential. But would you want to go 2,000 years? Not really. I think there'd be a lot of disadvantages, but I also think that it would be very fascinating to see exactly how far things would go. You know, you know in 2,000 years, might be might not even be able to breathe the air. That's true. But then, I mean, I, I imagine humanity would have found a way to survive at that point. Um, thinking... I mean, maybe. Um, I mean, I feel like society probably would have collapsed, but I feel like something would have rebuilt. Uh, I, I, had, I had a thought in my head. It was um, like it was going along the lines of like, you know, would you be able to breathe the air kind of thing? But there was something mm -hmm. else, like, like something else that was in the future that, that if you went there, like, it wouldn't be... Like, you could go there, but you may not... You may not survive this trip because, like, everything is so much different. You'd have to do X. I can't remember what X was that, that popped into my head. Like, oh, you'd have to do this. And then, like, yeah, it's gone. Shit. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so, it, if I went to the future, I don't know where I want to go because I don't know what, I, what my expectation would be. Mm -hmm. Like, I go into the future and my expectation is, like, what, what am I expecting to see? Like, even bigger, flatter TVs? Like... <laughs> like phones built into like your into your body like what am I expecting to see I think right. I think the most the, the most disappointing thing would be if I went like 40 years into the future right and things weren't really weren't really much different than what they are now oh I don't feel like they would be like that that would be that would suck be like oh, okay great so you know phones are still the same like and it's just maybe maybe they now they've gone they're gone in the opposite direction now they've gotten smaller right right oh it, um, it would definitely fluctuate just like any like fashion thing, the, the, I think the um, architecture and stuff in the future would be uh, really stilted because you would have these uh, people that would uh, they they wouldn't be making anything like fresh mm -hmm. and new. It would just be kind of like the um, it would be the same old thing. Like you wouldn't be they wouldn't be looking at like the future as as the like. Okay, we're moving into the future. Let's, let's do something that's a little more futuristic. Right, right. It would just be like, oh, um, we're moving into the future. Uh, well, this kind of style still works for everybody else. Like you know, you wouldn't you wouldn't have a you wouldn't have that big of a change. Yeah, yeah. No, I just I feel like like forty years or something wouldn't really be far enough in the future for there to be any positive change in America. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I get the feeling that you'd step out of the time machine and you'd see a bunch of people still wearing masks and, like, people of different races eyeballing each other suspiciously. And yeah. then some chick looking at you and going, ew, a man. <laughs> and, and so, like, it just, it doesn't seem like there'd be any kind of, like, 
positivity out of out of going such a short distance ahead. So that that's why I just want to lean into it and say two thousand years. You know, let's let's see what happens. Like America would definitely not be around in another two thousand years. <laughs> I, I, I think I could agree with that. Oh, there, there might be some kind of new like political system, but. Yeah, I don't think America could, could still be around 2,000 years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it'd be like the new nation of Jackassia or something, mm-hmm. but... You know, I mean, who, who knows? Maybe I could, like... Maybe I could, like, scrounge around and finally find an anarchist place at that time. I think I think you probably have too many. Like, the, mar- so, the market would be flooded with anarchist places. <laughs> yeah, the bad kind of anarchists, yes. Um... <laughs> You, you you don't want the the Project Mayhem guys, trust me. What's wrong with them? They're the ones who blow shit up that they don't like. They're also they're also very artistic. Yeah, I mean, well they they build houses. And they paint self portraits. There is that. And they make a lot of soap. Mm-hmm. You know, I I, I guess that wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. It's just it, it it's anarcho primitivism where it's like you know, they, they're way less concerned about constructing a society of people looking out for each other than they are of just, like, tearing down what you currently have. Yeah. But yeah, no, I mean, it's it's definitely not the worst form of anarchism, so... Yeah. See? But even that, even that is not sustainable. Mm-hmm. So... I, I mean, like, not, nothing that involves humanity is sustainable in the long term. All right, so let me ask you this. What would you do if you went 2,000 years in the future and you arrive there and there's nobody there? There's nobody on Earth. All the time I need and all the time I want. Well, I was thinking because, they, because there's now we've colonized other planets and hmm. so we've just kind of left Earth and, you know, it's like, so you get there, it's like there's nobody there. Places are overgrown, yeah. you know. You can find a place to, to live or sleep because you know uh, yeah. the the doors and stuff are still there, and like houses and things or whatever, if there are any. So you can still find a place that you'd be able to to squat, but then you have like you know different additions to the house that may be to help out with whatever changes occurred between last time you were there and now, or last time you were there and when you left going into outer space. Yeah. So, you know, my, my first thought would be that I'd be super excited about that because I'm, I'm very much a loner anyway. Uh-huh. So, you know, I, I think it would just be like, hell yeah, you know, I can, I can find a library and just read a bunch of books. I can find some paper and, and draw and this will be awesome. But then... I feel like that wouldn't last super long for me, and after, like, a couple of years, it would just hit the point where it's like, Shut the fuck up, Spalding! (laughs) No, you can't tell me not to eat this pill I found on the ground. It's my pill! I found it! I'm gonna swallow and see what happens! Fuck you! That would be great. I don't know. I I think I would just be... Um... Hmm. I, I'm still trying to think of like I'm gonna say 200 years. Hmm. I wouldn't want to go 2,000, but I think 200 would be a good a good year for me. Hmm. Um. And then um. Can't be a, can't be the B girl. Do what? I said you can't be the B girl. Can't be the B girl. Yeah, can't be the B girl. Can't be the B girl. Yeah. I think we're both getting really tired, but I don't quite understand. <laughs> so okay, so if you go two hundred years into the future, right? Mm. Um, and like everything's going to be different. Um, well, you're not. I mean, if you if you so in in this in this like. In this this time travel hypothesis, mm-hmm. um, if you're going into the future, obviously at this point neither one of us have any um, have any um, uh, dependents. Right. We have no children, so our bloodline ends the day we go into the future. Yeah, that's true. So we're we're just kind of on our own. So because of that, we don't have any other family. 
we don't have anything there and you know we just we just can't be just we would just be lost right right so we, we would just be just kind of like floating around in a world where everybody already has like a, their life is you know set like they already have their they're already doing whatever it is they're doing and we just don't fit in because it's all new to us it's all strange mm-hmm. and and it's like where do we how, how, how do we work how do we fit in like where do we go like and plus everything's going to be so new it's going to be so different i think language is going to be different like everything will just be so different and new like oh yeah I where mean, do we slang has changed so much even in the past 10 years so, yeah. So uh, that's that's what I was thinking. Like, okay, so then, then what? Hmm. Plus, like, you got to account for like microevolution type stuff, where, like, we're we're carrying stuff and we're immune to stuff that, like, people in the future may not be anywhere near resistant to. So yep. we could just, like, wipe out an entire city. Oh, God, yeah, you could bring back just, like, just regular common cold. Mm-hmm. Just kill almost everybody. That'll teach them. So, yeah, eh, two, 200 years seems a bit more reasonable. Yeah. I, I, I don't imagine that the entire world will be uh, abandoned at that point, but... I I don't think America's even going to last another 200 years. I'm thinking to myself, maybe, maybe not. I mean, obviously we're we're speculating what it would look like, but, Mm -hmm. I mean, how we could be living underground. That'd be kind of cool. We could become mole people. Uh, I don't know if I want to be a mole person. Behold the underminer! Um... See, I was thinking more of like a like maybe a chud, hmm. or a um, um. What else? What are the other ones that that live under underground? Uh, didn't the Toadmen live underground in the old Fantastic Four comics? Yeah, I was actually thinking more of the um, shit. What is that? Um, H.G. Wells time machine. Oh yeah, those, those ape dudes. Yeah, the Morlocks. That's what I'm trying to think of. Morlocks. Oh shit! Yeah, I'd love to be a Morlock. You would? Yeah. Why don't you want to be a Morlock? Because ape, ape alone weak, ape together strong. Okay. Um, yeah, just these these big old badass gorilla monster things. Amy, pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, let's see. What there's, there's um, hmm. There were there there weren't any like hidden societies in Journey to the Center of the Earth, were there? I'm thinking. Um, not, not that I can think of. No. Huh. Huh. Hmm. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I, I it's, I'm having a hard time kind of thinking of a place because even 200 years I'm like okay technology would look like X, but I don't even know if we would still be alive enough to have technology. And then depending on when that peaked, like I could be on a on a completely like derelict world trying to find the next place to go to because Earth is gone, right? And I wouldn't know where to go. Um, yeah, but Earth being gone wouldn't be so bad. You could do the Wally thing, you know. Uh, Watch old movies and live in the junkyard. Yeah, why not? I mean, yeah. provided there is a junkyard still, and you know, <laughs> movies are not just beamed into your head like automatically. Well, you know, I mean, it, 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 it could suck, but. I mean, we, we've got technology from, like, 200 years ago around still, so. Wouldn't be the best thing in the world, but it'd be doable. 
Yeah, I, I, for me, I'm still like I want to. I still want to play kind of safe. I'm gonna go like 50 years in the future because I'm thinking like 200 <laughs> years. Like I get, you know, I, I I don't know. It just seems so far away that anything could happen. Like if I go 60, I still feel safe. Like like we would still we would still have like a little bit of our a little bit a little bit of our soul left. Yeah. Well, not to get not to get overly political, but I feel like just going forward 60 years, it's gonna be like. Oh, well, well, welcome to the race war. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm not doing that. We we did that once before, and it, it just no, no, I'm not doing that this time. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can. I mean, I, well, I, I would say that if I went that, and it was like, welcome to the race war. But like, okay, well, this pretty much tells me why I'm saying that even six years into the future, shit hasn't changed. Right. Yeah. But here's the bad thing, though, man. Like, whichever one we go to, we're stuck there. Mm -hmm. so if it does happen to be a race war we're stuck there if it does happen to be like a spaceship that kind of stops by and does this because um, we don't live on the world anymore mm -hmm. like we're still like how do we how do we get around and get you know get moving before it comes down and like, yeah and you may not even be acclimated to space travel mm -hmm. um, see that's why I think like going super far in the future like 2000 years like it, it's it's a really long shot Hail Mary kind of pass, but it's like either either society's going to be so collapsed that there is absolutely no other humans on the planet, period, and then I just have the place to myself, and I can finally just masturbate in my front yard without being judged, or society will be so far advanced that they can actually compensate for dealing with somebody in the future who is not acclimated to the, those needs. So let me ask you a question about this then. You go into the future, right? Mm -hmm. How do you keep yourself from becoming a a museum centerpiece? Uh, I don't know. That's that's gonna kind of leave me at the mercy of of humanity. You know, like they they pretty much have to make that decision. Here, the other part of this, remember that you're not coming back. Mm -hmm. So you also have to make peace with, with the fact that you're not coming back. Yeah. <laughs> I won't be missed. So, I mean, they, all that's gone. And you, also, if you go to 2,000 years to the future, I mean, comics could be, who knows what they are, but I think 2,000 years in the future, we're not going to have print media anymore. Oh, probably not, no. So what, what would you do then? Bring it back. Be a trendsetter. Oh, yeah. Good luck with that since we don't have any trees anymore. <laughs> yeah, we don't need trees. We can, we can use paper that's made out of skin. Okay, great. So, what, are you going to be writing, like, volume 17 of the Necronomicon? Yeah. The Necronomicon 17 is like, it only gets worse from here. Yeah, I'll, I'll do the, uh, the new international Akumi translation of the Necronomicon, which will be in comic format. And uh, I'll, I'll bring cults back, too, because in 2,000 years, humanity will have developed past the need for cults. No, so. no. We, never, we would never move beyond <laughs> the need for cults. <laughs> so, uh, well, I'll, I'll bring them a cool, old-school cult. I'm bringing culties back. <laughs> yeah? You motherfuckers don't know how to act. It's like, it's like, oh, yeah, well, my cult has orgies. What does your cult have? Definitely not orgies. Yeah, and, and I hope you enjoy those old orgies when you're wearing your Demolition Man helmet to have sex with because you can't actually touch Sandra Bullock. <laughs> that sounds like fun. I'll finally figure out what those three seashells are for. Everybody, everybody, log in to uh, you know, so we so we can uh, get on the right server so we can have our, our big orgy here. What <laughs> server is it? Um, it says I'm locked out. I can't. My microphone's not working. How do I get this guy to squat? Like, uh, it's an orgy. You don't have to virtually teabag somebody. There's somebody here that would do that for you. And I was like, oh, guys, I don't think I'm going to be able to join in this time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't know, man. Like I said, it, it, it was my idea. It was my, it was my question, but I think it's scary. For me, going too far and... and Going into a world that's so alien that I don't recognize it anymore, and there's nothing about it that I can associate to, mm -hmm. that was difficult because since I'm gone, I'm a man out of time, like, and I never get that time back. 
Right. And there's right. no one that can that I can meet with that will that will help with me to adjust to it. It's just it's just done. Yeah. I mean, biggest thing would be like with going that far in the future, like with two hundred years there'd just be a difference in like dialect or or slang or accent, but you know, going two thousand years, English is probably not going to exist at that point. Yeah, I would agree with you. And so then you'd get to just be a caveman. That's kind of funny. I'm a modern day caveman. Like, I'd be a caveman, but I'm not a caveman because, like, I don't know anything. And I, like, you know, wear loincloths and, like, you know, have, like, sticks and stones for weapons. But, yeah, to them, I would be a caveman. Yeah. Yeah, it's like pretty much nothing is off the table because, you know, they don't know any better. It's not like there's going to be, like, great records existing of of what Earth society was like back 2,000 years ago. That's true. So Those would be the first things that they'd get rid of. Yeah. So basically, I could come out of the time machine, hit some guy in the head with a rock, grab some lady's boobs, pee all over the sidewalk, and they wouldn't know that that wasn't acceptable <laughs> in this day and age. <laughs> yeah, 2,000 years later, I'm pretty sure that like all technology, like, any records of like this stuff from the past, would, like, that, would, that would be gone. Oh, we, we would have lost that a long time ago. Be like trying to find your refrigerator, like a manual. Right. Well, at some point over the next 2,000 years, we're bound to have like an EMP or something that just completely destroys the internet. And then finally, there will be seven years of God's peace on Earth as we don't have Twitter. That would be a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Of course, then by that time, Twitter would have involved in something where you can actually send like a tweet directly, psychically, just right, right from your head to somebody else's, <laughs> which would suck. Yeah, yeah. That that would be like the hot new social media, like, brainer. Yes. I, I already don't like it. <laughs> I just received a brain fart. Yes. No, God, that's exactly what it would be, too. Oh, yeah. All right, so I don't want to go to the future now. <laughs> This is your idea. Don't leave me. Don't leave me alone in the future. Now, I, actually, I mean, when I had the idea, I was like, I, I don't really even know where I want to go, but um, I don't, I don't know, man. I, I, I think, I think part of me would end up playing it safe and not going that far in the future. But since I don't know what's going to happen, mm -hmm. like I don't know, like what, what, what is is what would be considered playing it safe, like. I could think that, you know, well, this is playing it safe, and it's, that's not it's not safe enough. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the flip side, where it's like, ten years will be safe, and then you, you step out, and it's just the entire country's nuked. Yeah, that would, uh, that would be horrible. It's like, what, what, what happened? What did you do? And you just see, like, Biden step up to the podium and he rips off his his mask and he's like, It was me the whole time! <laughs> Surprise! You thought you could get rid of me. Oh, God, that would be... And I'd be stuck there in that future. I, that, that's, <laughs> that's when I'd just be like, You finally did it! You maniacs! <laughs> Now I'm going to knock over the Statue of Liberty. I'm going to push the statue over and replace it with a statue of me. Uh, God, that would... <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, st I'm still trying to think, like, where would I want to go? Like, future-wise, I, I can't... I, said, I, I don't want to go too far where everything's gone, but, but I feel if I don't go far enough, there's, there's no advances. Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you what, if I, if I don't do the 2,000 years into the future... Flip side I'd be willing to attempt would be a hundred years in the future in Japan. Because they're already like way ahead of the curve. Curb. So I'd, I'd like to see what Tokyo is like in a hundred years. Plus then I'd actually get to live in Japan. So. Um. Hey, we're an hour in. Hundred years into the future. Yeah, a hundred years seems pretty reasonable. Yeah, I guess it's not too bad. 
So yeah, I mean, my my first my first choice would still be like the two thousand year thing, but yeah, I, I could see just doing like a hundred years in in Tokyo just to just to see what advances they make there, and I can live in like a little capsule hotel. Hmm, it'd be interesting. Yeah, I, I could I could maybe do that. Maybe, maybe. So yeah. Anyway, so it, it's it's been an hour. I'm fading fast. Yeah, I think I'm already gone. It, it's like one o'clock in the morning, so we're we're both pretty tired. We we recorded five podcasts today. That's yeah. Plus plus a let's watch. Yeah, that's pretty good for us. A, and a good let's watch too. Holy shit! Yeah, yeah, thoroughly enjoyable one. Yeah, I don't... Um, got to see Patricia Quinn's left boob. Yeah. We had to... And, and the story wasn't bad. Yeah. And I, I, I feel bad because I, I brought the, this this topic up and I'm like, I don't really know because <laughs> no matter what you do, you, you'd be stuck there. You would be stuck there. <laughs> Which is also your rule. <laughs> that was your caveat that you came up with. <laughs> so I, I guess part part of the thing that, that, that bothers me is that if I went there and then like... In the future, I was the, I was the, um, like the, like you said, like the caveman, like, and it would be so hard to get people to, um, to accept you, be like, like, okay, yes, I realize that, that compared to you guys, I don't know anything, but I mean, I don't need to really be treated any differently, right. you know, cause I'm from the future or what, I mean, I'm from the past and, and then, I don't know. On the plus side, though, lots of movies to catch up on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. you know, it'd be just like the the time enough at last thing. Yeah. So you, you just set up a DVD player in the bank vault, and then you you break your glasses and look it wasn't fair at all. Hmm. Yeah. So that was it. It was different. And I kind of copped out the end because uh, I was like, you know, I got, I guess I didn't get scared, but I was like, I, I just like, there was so much, there was too much uncertainty for me to be able to make a good decision. Be like, what would I want to do? And you, you just dove right in. But like, two thousand years, there we go. <laughs> what, what, you know, whatever will be, will be. And I'm like, I'm like, no, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. You know, it's like, what if, what if, what if I end up on a running man? I haven't, I haven't been working out for the past two years, uh, two thousand years. I don't, I don't know what happens. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I, I know how to completely derail you if we ever get involved in a high stakes poker game or something. So I'll just be like, "All in," <laughs> at which point you'll be like, "Oh no, I didn't account for this possibility." I, oh no. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, again, my name is Turk One Eighty Two, and uh, as much as I hate the president, it looks like I'm stuck here. <laughs> And I'm a Comey, and, you know, the, the present does suck, but I'll, I'll take it over whatever bullshit <laughs> awaits us in the future, because it sure ain't going to get any better. That's true. Well, uh, we will see you guys in the future, because obviously we're recording today, and we'll, but it won't be posted today, so uh, we'll see what things are like by the time this gets posted. Yeah. Will it be in 2,000 years? Will it be in a hundred and I don't know twenty days, or will it be in like three weeks? Yeah, and if you're listening to this in the year three thousand twenty-one, uh, be sure to find our brains in the cryogenics lab and uh, just just upload a little message saying hi. Yeah, uh, upload some nudes for us, and I'll be able to tell you how to uh, how to properly throw our bodies and, and bring us out so that we can then uh, kind of put things back the way they need to be. Yeah. We'll, we'll fix your society. But uh, you, you definitely have to uh, upload some nudes into our brains first. Yep. Otherwise, we won't do it. Oh, man. Can I, you know, that, that this part sounds so lazy. But like, uh, like uh, scan nudes. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds lazy. Uh, yeah. But anyway, uh, thanks, everybody. Bye. Yeah. Bye, everyone. All right there, folks. That was Our Moms Think We're Funny. Let's, uh, let's give them a hand. <laughs>